Hello Sigma FP users, today we're testing out FP standard or normal false color. This was introduced by Sigma through firmware update 4.0 way back in April 2022. Sadly, this is the first time I got to test it out properly. First, I'll briefly talk about Sigma FP's monitoring issue. Secondly, I'll explain a bit about what false colors are and how they work. I'm using the term standard because as of a couple of weeks ago with firmware update 5.0, we got a new type of false color monitoring tool on Sigma named ELZone. Thirdly, I'll talk about FP's false color scale for a bit. Fourthly, I'll briefly mention the issues I've heard about concerning FP's false colors before the firmware update this year. Fifthly, we'll look at test footage in the ISO range 100 to 6400 in steps of 1 f-stop starting from exposure values over the clipping point and down to a couple of f-stops lower than clipping. Sixthly, I'll draw some conclusions based on the test footage. Lastly, I'll leave you with some properly exposed footage and its corresponding false colors. The false colors update was huge for the FP because of its monitoring issue that I'm sure all of you are aware of. Basically, the camera screen doesn't show you the raw image or an approximation of it in Rec 2020 color space, but a crunched down image in Rec 709 space. In practice, this is most painful because your image will look clipped much sooner than it actually is when you import it in DaVinci. So when you're shooting, it's really important to have a means of visualizing where the real clipping point is for each ISO. In comes the false color. Essentially, the false colors assigns different colors to areas of different brightness levels. The false colors that we're used to have an IRE or percent IRE scale. Do check whether what you're using displays IRE or percent %IRE, since it may become confusing if you're using a monitor with percent %IRE scale, for example, and the camera with IRE scale. IRE is based on voltage readings of the signal the camera gets, and they are linear, not logarithmic. Brightness, which is luminance perceived by the eye, and f-stops are logarithmic. Which means that the IRE units don't precisely translate and are consistent with f-stop changes. The colors or hues are arbitrarily assigned by the manufacturer of the display or camera that has this option. So for example, a Thomas false color scheme and numbers of hues is different from Blackmagic's or Sigma's. Sigma FP's false color scale is kind of confusing if you're not familiar with all of the notations used for false color and other means of exposure calculation. They have the 18% or middle gray value marked. The percent value signifies that the gray reflects 18% of the light it receives. Then they marked plus 1 EV, i.e. 1 f-stop higher than middle gray. And the rest of the numbers are IRE values. So again, starting with the zero EV stop here, it is then up to you to approximate how much underexposed or overexposed your other elements from the frame are with respect to this point. It is also not very accurate when it comes to lighting different skin tones. I didn't get to test Sigma's false colors before firmware update 5.0, but we did get a few comments about this, saying that it's only accurate for ISO 100 or its clipping points are not accurate. This Reddit thread sums it up in a nutshell, and it's very interesting since the person who posted this thread did some tests of their own.
With this in mind, let's look at the footage and see if the clipping points are accurate in false color now. I measured the exposure of the most lit part of the face with a light meter. Considering my subject's skin tone, the actual exposure of the face will be one f-stop higher than what my light meter indicated. I used the FP's dynamic range chart from here to refer to the clipping points for each ISO in the subsequent test footage. Sigma FP's false colors show the clipping point accurately in red, so around 100 and 100 plus IRE, for each of the tested ISOs. False color takes the raw image from the sensor, not the Rack 709 crunch down image we get on the monitor of the FP, which explains why the clipping point is accurate. If we take this example, we have ISO 200 just at or a bit below the clipping point, so this image should not be clipped. Indeed, this is what the false color shows us. Now we zoom in the same image. Clearly the monitor shows the left hand side of the face clipped. Now look at the range of details you have on the face here in the grays of the false color. Let's check with the CDNG file for ISO 200 as well. These are the CDNG files in Rec. 709 color space, same as on the FP's monitor. First, let's double check the real clipping point in DaVinci. Here we have plus 5 EV, which should be clipped. Even with the highlight recovery on and having pulled down the highlights, we still have clipping. For plus 4.0 EV, first not clipped EV, we have all the details there, even without any highlight recovery. Here, for plus 6.0 and 5.0 EV, the monitor's image looks clipped, whereas the false color is clearly not clipped, same as for ISO 200. Yes. 
Moving on to CD and GMBM film again. Let's check the clipping point in practice. Here's plus 7 EV. Even with the highlight recovery on and the highlights pushed down, there are unrecoverable details. Plus 6.0 EV needs a bit of persuasion, but if you decrease the highlights, all details are recoverable. The third and last conclusion, false colors shows crushed shadows too soon. In this example, we have ISO 100. The purple areas should not have any recoverable details, which is consistent with what we see on the monitor. But if we take even the recorded monitor image, which is in ProRast LT quality, and we bump up the exposure and play with the curves for a bit, we can recover some details, particularly in the door area. Now here's the CDNG footage. And with the shadows recovered, the results are great. So much of the details in the purple areas can be recovered. I don't see this as a big problem though, since trying to recover shadows from the purple area produces significant noise even at ISO 100. More so for higher ISOs. So you'd better expose your shadows in the blue area or above. There seems to be some confusion around the idea of these stress tests that we do in our videos. The idea behind them, stress test, is to show how the camera or the features of the camera, such as false colors here, behave when they're stressed to their limits. Although I do think I mention in every clip that the images are fine for when the footage is not exposed up to its clipping point or down to cross shadows. Anyway, here's some properly exposed footage with its corresponding false colors for anyone who is not interested in clipping points and such. That's it for today, see you next time!